Hey everyone, Meredith Molinari back once again here with Steve Ricosa from Cryptic Studios. Hi there. And we are going to talk about Star Trek Online. I don't know if anyone's noticing a theme here, but I've been doing a couple Star Trek. I'm kind of a big fan. I've never attempted online, mainly because my laptop is not strong enough for your programming on the PC. <laughs> but now that it's coming to console, all of us PS4 fans can enjoy Star Trek Online. It's exciting. What an undertaking to oh take that entire world and and put it onto a console. What was that experience like? It was it was a long journey. <laughs> so last year we decided that we wanted to come to console, so we had to sit down and figure out how to get a 72 button keyboard onto a 16 button controller. Did you just shrink it down, use a shrink ray, and just like stick it inside That's the, it. the controller? That's it, simple as that. Took right, like five cool. minutes, we were done. <laughs> uh, and so we spent five or six weeks trying to figure out a control scheme that would work for us. Um, after we figured that out, we were able to green light the project and move forward, and the control scheme has evolved in the months that we've been play testing the game. But that first one, it was kind of the root of where we were at and really showed the potential that the game would have. Wow. Yeah. I, I, it blows my mind that you guys were able to take that because it really is a very in-depth system that includes not only the keyboard, but also the mouse and oh, moving yeah. everything around. Yep. And you only get 12 buttons on a controller tops, right? Uh, 16. 16 and then the six. And the six, yeah, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a big undertaking. No, it was a challenge. But you guys also updated the game engine and the lighting dynamics as well. Absolutely. We said if we're going to come onto uh, PlayStation 4, we have to look like we belong, right? The game is six and a half years old. That means a ton of content, but it also means it's a little bit older game. So we wanted to give it a facelift. So um, our core technology team went through. They gave us HDR lighting. They gave us deferred rendering, light probes, diffuse probes, specular probes. All these things combine to bring us uh, into the current generation of consoles and something that we're proud to show on the PlayStation 4. You know, and it looks great. And I was watching all the trailers, and I was like, oh, wow, it looks really amazing. They're talking about this lighting thing. And then I saw on your website where you guys do the before and after pictures, and it's only when you see them like side by side that you're really like, wow, that is yeah. a major update that you guys yeah. did. Yeah, we've been showing people behind the scenes, uh, you know, when we're doing our behind closed doors demos, and everyone's been really surprised. Like, this looks fantastic. It really does. I mean, we're looking at some of the B-roll footage here, and it just, it's incredible. Now, there are over 130 episodes. That's correct. That's a lot of Star Trek. That's right. That's more than any five seasons of any uh, Star Trek series. Ooh. See, and I thought I watched a lot of Star Trek. That yeah. is a lot of episodes. Yeah. yeah, That's pretty amazing. And you guys got some really great voice actors. Some of our fan favorites are back. Michael Dorn, Jerry Ryan. That's right. We, what was it like bringing them back in? Oh, it was so cool. We have almost uh, the entire cast, uh, bridge crew of Voyager, people from every single series. Um, Everyone at, Star at uh, Cryptic Studios is a huge Star Trek fan. So it's kind of as much of a joy for us as it is for, as for the fans. Um, and so we Did love- Did you geek out when Michael Dorn arrived? Because I would totally geek oh, out. Like, I would geek out over Warp. Sometimes they come in, sometimes it's remote. I remember um, Jerry Ryan was recording, and uh, she was out of, out of town, but she was recording remotely. And like, I'm like, you know what? I want to go sneak by the audio room and kind of listen in. And I open the door, and there's already people listening at the door <laughs> to hear her doing her voiceover work. It was great. These guys just like slip right back into that role. Wow. And uh, it's awesome because we're kind of telling stories that some of them want to tell as well, kind of finish off something for the character that was left hanging. Nice. Um, it's really cool. We, take, we like to pull story threads from the episodes and bring them into our story episodes oh, in the game. Oh, that's great. So yeah. that's so fun for the fans to be able to like go back and be like, I remember that. All the time. All those little Easter eggs then. Yep, oh, all the time. That is so cool. The way we set up our game is we have uh, a lot of episodic content. So you might meet a bad guy in one episode and not defeat him until 10 or 12 episodes later. So when you're playing through the main campaign of, uh, of the game, it's almost like binge watching seasons on Netflix. Wow. Um, so you can play for half hour, 45 minutes and play one episode or play as long as you want and just start burning through them. That's incredible. So talk a little bit about the gameplay. What do you actually, when you get in, what's your first step? For someone that's never seen it, never been on Star Trek Online. Sure. So you pick uh, which faction you want to play. So you can pick Federation, Romulan, Klingons. And so those are all available from the start. Um, you play the tutorial. You become a captain of your ship, and you start going on your adventures. So you have full space combat. So you've got your, your starship, which you've been seeing in some of these, mm -hmm. um, flying around, fighting other ships. And then you beam down to the ground, and you've got a full ground game as well. It's almost like two games in one, because they're fully featured ground in space. And it's just exploration while you're down on the ground and exploring new planets? Sometimes you're exploring new planets. Sometimes you're uh, playing those episodes. Sometimes you're in a giant map with 20 other players uh, trying to accomplish a huge objective altogether. Wow. Yeah. That's really immersive. Yeah. About, uh, currently, about how many players do you have in your online version? Uh, a lot. We a lot? We don't, <laughs> we don't really talk about our numbers. We have a lot of players a playing players. simultaneously. And they've been uh, loyal for a long time. Again, six and a half years six for an MMO. Years doesn't happen that often, so we're really proud when we come across these big milestone anniversaries. Um, so, pretty huge game. We're really proud to bring it to uh, PlayStation. That's really awesome. A little bit about some of the um, auto-activated features that I was reading yep. about, because there's a lot going on when you're a captain and you're in a battle and you want to do things quickly. Yep. 
So there's like presets that you can have? Absolutely. So uh, I mentioned we had to get all those 72 buttons down to 16. <laughs> so we came up with um, a power wheel. So you can hold down a button, you can select powers on the wheel, um, and you can select as many as you want. So you can just pull the right trigger and bounce all the way around the wheel. Um, another option we have is setting all those powers to auto fire. And so it's not just having the fire as often as they're available. For example, if we have a, um, a heal for your hull, and you can have it kick off at 50% health, so oh, I'm getting damaged, or you can say, no, I'd rather it go off at 75% health, or you can say, oh, someone put a debuff on me, just cleanse that debuff immediately. So you can pick oh, and choose cool. how you want to set it up. So you've got a variety of tactical options depending on your skill level or how much control you want to have. So as you keep playing the game, your skills get better, you yep. get more upgrades, more optimizations yep. for each of your... Absolutely, and it sounds like a lot, but you start off with one power, right? right? And you work your way up slowly, so you definitely get a time to get a feel for those controls. Yeah, so you get like one under your belt, and then like you move on and yep. expand. Yep. That's awesome. Now this is actually going to be free to play this fall. 100% this fall, that's, free to download. That outside there? Free to play this fall. Just say that one more time, because that's amazing. Free to download. All our content, uh, content updates are free. Everything in the game is free. We do have microtransactions. You can earn currency in the game, trade that to players for money, and get everything in the C-Store for free as well. Wow. So uh, you guys have like private funding? Like, How is this even possible that this is we all have, free? We have generous fans. That is amazing. We have generous fans. That is so cool. Well, I'm really excited. I had never had a chance to play it when it was on the PC, and now all of us PS4 fans finally get a chance to be part of the Star Trek Online universe. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Steve. I really appreciate you. Happy being here. With us. Yes. Well, it's nice to meet another Trekkie. Yeah. There's, there's a bunch of us floating around here at E3. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> PlayStation.